Hi guys, we're back with Angus. So I, I do want, you know, I think people need to understand you're, you're stat, there is a static in dog training and that you're trying to find out if, I don't care what it is, the smallest thing that this dog can do good, not get it out here. I'll get him out here. He ran under there yesterday. I'll correct him. He'll learn. It gets to the point. If Odd. Ugh. I wouldn't on Wi-Fi. Um, you know, so that's what I'm thinking. Just make it go. Oh, and here he comes. Yay! <laughs> so that's his default, and, you know, I think that's what you want. Not poops and runs off the other direction. I was going to right now, after they poop, they're going to run. You better make sure it's in your direction. Anyway, Chelsea, if you're there, I, I wrapped these two phone holders together to make a double strong one. So I'm saying, you know, and when you're dealing with a dog, aggressive dog, people just want to immediately attack that behavior. The problem is if that who you become is the behavior attacker. <laughs> yeah, if you're just another attacker. You're just attacking that behavior. You're not really anybody that is going out of their way to balance that out by saying, you know, this is unbelievably good. So I'm just going to work on his... I, I, I already know he's awful on the leash. So I just used my pager to get him up there. And you can hear this thing, so, you know, when you guys... It's, it's not too hard to figure out because I'm doing it every time I move. I'm just syncing him up. If you said you've got to sync him up, you've got to sync him up to you. Because if you said, where do most people, they're totally out of sync with the dog. You know, totally out of sync. So I'm gonna get my collar on. I do need to put it where my box is opposing. I'm not gonna jerk this leash at all. I'm not gonna jerk it at all. If he hits the end, So I've got two technical turns. So that's what we need to practice. And I'm driving him forward. When I when I move and go forward, I'm not asking him, I'm driving him. So that turn is very, very technical. And if you said how how do you know? You can repeat it over and over and over and over again. The exact same time. Drive them forward. It's very, very technical. He's moving around me as though I'm the barrel horse. Watch. And then it just ends right there. And he'll turn this way. I didn't get him, go, get, get him going back yet. Let's see if we can get him to go back. And I think in the beginning, if you're trying to get them to do that, and they don't know, you've got to just say yay for moving at all. You've got to say yay for moving at all. All right, he's going to dance like a bear. Oh, how he loves to dance like a bear. So I know he kind of turns this way better. And if you wanted to be more technical, if you said there's 15 people out there more technical than me, I'd say, thank God, where can I see their stuff so I can get some ideas? Because if I wanted to be more technical, honestly, if you said, what would be better than this collar? One that had a box on either side that you could cue it this way or cue it that way. And they already kind of do that. I'm just saying do the same thing I do. Or do the mirror image of what I do. Soon we should go round and round and round. Oh, yeah, he's trying to get all the way on there. Now he's the dancing elephant. Oh, now that would be quite a feat if you could bounce. All right, so I know he doesn't turn this way as good.
So my job is just to help them. That's my job, is to help them. All right, I'm gonna look at the platform. I'm just, they've got such fast reaction time. And he sees the leash there, and if you said, oh, well, is he good on the leash? No! He's terrible on the leash. But I'm making it this, where he is good on the leash. So there is some reference, not you're just all awful on the leash. I'm telling you, the dog was dragging me to each kennel fence fighting like I've never seen before. Thank God they weren't fence fighting. They were fence fighting bad, but not as bad as him. All right, let me see if I can get him on that. He's like my dancing bear. All right, let me turn this water off real quick. Just drop the leash, kind of walk away. He's like a dancing bear. All right, so what I need to try to get is some kind of default sitter down in this dog. So, let me grab a towel real quick. So, I think you're making a mental note all the time. Uh, you know, okay, I left. The dog was trying to squeeze in the door after me. And then when I came back, it was still right there. So, you know, I am kind of making a note of that. And if you said it, but that it's, you know, the balance is tipping. I'm, I've got the upper hand. I uh, know, oh I see my pool has a leak. I mean, I've only had that thing for three years. I paid $10. How long do these things last? Um, so that's my job is to get a default. But I am saying, and the, you know, and there are dogs, you've got to understand, there are dogs that have no inhibition dragging a leash. You know, that's, that's why it doesn't. The only reason I really do it, if you have one that's hard to catch, that doesn't really run away, but you can't get a hold of it because they've grabbed for the collar and things too much. And so it's dodgy. As Sophia says, it's dodgy. So I'm going to let him know. I'm not going to let him. He's got free agency. He, if you notice, though, I, he doesn't sit. He doesn't sit or lay down. He's always standing. He's kind of like that bulldog. And that's just their stature. That's why every statue you ever see of them, they're standing up. Very easy to get them to pose that way. No, Mommy didn't hide anything. So I can buzz him back from there. I don't have to, though. And I've been doing it a little bit inside. I can try to see if the, the chest scratch kind of works. He's had a lot of scratching in his life. I let him sit on the couch and get the chest scratches. 
if you said, well, that's praise. No, that's kind of an attempt to kind of trigger the behavior. <laughs> oh, now look at him bite the leash. Oh, I bet you were a leash biter. Oh, I bet you were. Usually it kind of makes him sit down, but he's not on the couch, so I'll get him doing it. But, you know, you need to make that observation about these. They're not, that bulldog, he's got two behaviors. He goes and he lays down because he's trained to lay down, but he doesn't really sit or anything too much. Not if there's anything going on, they're always at the ready. All right, so... He's been good on the leash, so I know I can get him to carry things. I might be able to get him to do it on the leash. You know, maybe that's what we should be thinking, Mike. I think if you're going to do it as a trained retrieve, you are going to have to do it on the leash. So, you know, but I'm not, the leash is kind of incidental. I'm not, I don't want you to say, oh my God, you know, she's got it on a leash on fenced in property. It's really more just to get leash this dog, everything he does, he's gotta be able to do it on the leash. Oh, he was a dreadful puller. And, and, you know, just the amount of, it's a very, very strong dog. Oh, he's very strong. All right, so what we can see, what well, I can see, I think the way to do it would be just, yay. It's, it's really not gonna be a difficult transition, Mike, if you're there, tells to get, to go from this to, the train to retrieve. Not particularly on this dog, but. He got the leash too. Oh, and he can be, I'm sure, easily trained to pick up his leash. Oh, he's so, so cute. Yes, I know he can do this good. And I, you know, it may be the, you know, I'm starting to see like, not, you know, that's why I used to put a train to retrieve on a lot of them because you could take them out. You know, and like Parker, you saw how I saved myself with Parker the other day by just being more interesting because I was the one that had the thing. All right, let's just see if we can get him to travel one time. Precious, precious monkey. He does it all with the leash on. same behavior you're just adding two or three seconds of travel time it's the exact same behavior it's it's very interesting the way it works I don't you know I don't know if you're there hi Mandy I don't know if you're there Mike oh I know you probably couldn't see me okay hang on let me do it again uh, I, can get in, I know I can get into travel to here I said, I'm going to do it more as a train-type situation. My job is to get him to travel. My job is to get him to travel. And, and that's all it is. You're just taking the exact same behavior and making the sequence a little bit longer. Anyway, he's doing absolutely perfect. You know, and that's what we've got to say. We've got to try to structure. If I'm just out here correcting this dog, by now, the dog knows who's the enemy. It's, that's the reality of it. 
If you think you can just keep coming at dogs and coming at dogs and correcting them, making them sit there while somebody vacuums and all this shit, and that's, you know, later when you pull out the vacuum, it's going to run there and sit there like a statue. Oh, please. Here's an idea. Dog training and vacuuming don't mix. I like to separate my dog training and vacuuming. <laughs> Though occasionally it does come in handy with the sweeping when they try to attack the broom. I will give it that much. So anyway, guys, that's where we're at. And I'm, you know, I said to myself today, because he wasn't successful. No, not because he wasn't successful. He, he was successful yesterday, but it just drained me having to stare at that thing for 20 minutes. So, and he needs, he needs, and the only thing I'm doing on the leash, he's already doing it without the leash. And I'm just driving him around with the pager. It's very clear, it's very concise. And, hi Sally. Anyway, this is your next step, Sally. After you, what you need to do is start setting up, you need to get your platform. And then what you've got is a second, what we call the second location. You can travel to the second location. travel back so so he's doing the exact same thing on the leash off the leash you know but he's so bad on the leash that you've got to start I honestly I honestly do think now you should get him doing it off the leash first and I don't know if you could hear but I did do the uh, I did do the pager as a cue to pick it up Oh, he chases him away to protect him, protect him from the evil vacuum. Yeah. It, it, ideally, you just want him to be neutral to the vacuum. Because there's people that tell him to go after it and stuff, but, you know, they're usually either afraid of it, that's why they go after it, or you just want him to be indifferent to it. So, that's what you're thinking, Sally. You've got a little platform. You've got a second location. You know, if he sees me going over here, he's got an idea. You know, he knows where I'm going. And then he knows there's a direct, there's a little road called Angus Lane that leads right to this platform. You know, so I'm not just kind of randomly going around. I've only had the platform for like a year and a half though, so. You know, but if you said there's other people doing more with the climb, I would say, who, where are they? I don't see them doing it. I, I know it's not really designed for dogs to go really fast. That's what they need. I know that's what they need, the super speed climb. All right, listen, I will be, okay, well these, you can get on Amazon. They're ridiculously priced honestly but it probably will last forever or the other alternative is just get any guy that has any skill at all to build one just make sure it's 24 inches high and I think it can be bigger than whatever these are whatever Honestly, this internet's ridiculous. That's what it's gonna have to be. Creepy phone guy comes over. She's like, okay, you can't get these guys any creepier. All right, you guys, I will be right back though. But yeah, that's what you need, Sally. You need, it needs to be 24 inches high and I don't know why. Apparently it was specially designed, but whatever, whatever research they did to come up with that, it is ideal because you've got a couple different things. You can be the seated handler and this is the right height, or the dog is on it, and they do like to get up there because they can be closer to you. They can be closer to you, and they can see you. You know, they can see you. If you said, I'm looking for eye contact, I'll tell you, this is a good place to start. You know, because you've lifted them up a couple feet, and so it's, it's easy to see. Anyway, he's as cute as a little button, isn't he? Oh, he's a little button butt. Yeah, yeah, for whatever reason, for me anyway, to do this thing where you're setting it on the ground, you know, it's, there's, it's, 
You know, if you're here and it's there, you're just ask. No, I'm not going to give you a chance to run to the bush. You're... How much are you asking for? You're asking them to pick it up six inches. If you can't get a dog to pick up something six inches, this is the same dog that will get a giant stick and run around your yard for two hours. You know? Or pick up who knows what. I might pick up full water bottles. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, 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 Sally. Yeah, you're exactly right. This is like Little Tykes. That's kind of how it's built. It's it's not this space-age design like they say, but I am going to get some Little Tykes stuff next time. We're going to have a little kitchen over there and a little... Yeah, just so I can hide the stuff. Anyway, I'll be right back, but you see where we're at, and this is a dog that, you know, you've got to safeguard that attitude towards you or you're nobody to say anything. You know what I mean? People who I don't like can try to correct me. They're nobody to me. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't work, you know? So if he didn't like me, I wouldn't transfer at all. So anyway, he's doing great. I'll be right back with a, another exciting episode.